all the work, all the years, all the supplements, all the food, everything that you've done is in the next five seconds. You've done the work, you've done the preparation, you've mentally prepared yourself. So when you step on the platform, it's just like another day. I don't have any thought process that goes into it. Nothing is going through my head at that point in time. Once I grab the bar, I just quit thinking. Right before I lift, I'm usually sitting on the bench. I think I actually have like my elbows like on my knees, just kind of build it up and just make it as easy as possible, make this look ridiculously silly, and then finish. It's kind of like the recital. You've been practicing for so long, you've done all the work, you either know you can do it or you know you can't. There's a ton of hard work and effort that goes into it, but he's also something, at least in my opinion, of a genetic marvel. That's kind of the level that Jeremy, Jeremy's operating on in terms of the bench press. Just staggering. At one point today, he did 545 pounds, and I uh, was going to take a picture of it with an iPad that has like a slight lag, and it happened so fast I missed it. That is just unheard of. The first time, that was overwhelming. I, I don't think it really, hit me until I was like sitting down on the bench and I look over, you can't even see through the crowds of people standing around watching. Five rows back of just people and then it's like, okay, now you've got the people on the shoulders of the people behind them. The community for the most part is the camaraderie is really great. I mean, everybody pulls for each other. It's always a sport I know where you can be going to get somebody and you're cheering them on to get a bigger squat than you at that point in time. BJ Whitehead is a guy who we were sponsoring a powerlifting meet in Florida. One of the things we were tasked with when going down, down there was to provide a sponsorship to one lifter. What we were looking to do was try to kind of find the perfect balance of awesome lifter who had the right look for an animal, right? And then who also was a good human being, a good dude. He's proven to just to have uh, made us look like we know what we're doing and, and judged him properly because he's a great lifter and, and a great guy, good representative of the brand. Coming in to the cage last year and seeing guys that I'd never met before, but I mean, they just kind of took me in like I was one of them and like I've been one of them for the, the whole time and you know, it's just like a big family. We see each other like once or twice a year or like a competition a couple of times and it's like we've never left. I'm a high school football coach, strength and conditioning coach. I tell my athletes all the time, you know, you be the best at whatever you're doing at that moment in time. Whatever you're doing, it doesn't matter if it's, you know, you're doing your math homework or if you're on the football field, you have to give everything you got into it. You know, everything else has to be put on hold. Lifting's fun, and even if I was a millionaire from it, I would step back because I want to be known more by three people as being like a good husband or father than I am by a million people as a good bencher. I want them to look at like what I've done and be like, this is the time that I spent away or the time that we all went to the gym together and like, this is what it's for. Hopefully like down the road, they'll see that if you want something, you actually have to put in the work and you have to put in the time. The best of the best are gonna be very strong-willed. They're gonna have the determination and the willpower to actually do everything they have to do, including actually work on technique everybody likes to go in and do bench press. It's the other stuff that kind of sucks, like the accessory stuff, like the chest supported rows that like, as I see, like I gotta do it, I'm like, I hate doing those, but I need to.
I'm exhausted and up all night at work or something, well, I need to take caffeine because I need to go and I need to get stronger. There's always a risk if you're going to do something, you know, involving weight on your back or picking it up or, I mean, there's a risk walking down the sidewalk. If you live in fear of that, then, you know, you're not really living. Everything can get stronger. You can always be a stronger person, whether you're talking about your mind or your, or your muscles or whatever. Sports as a kid, like what that teaches you is not only like the teamwork and the basic skills and the leadership, all that carries over into your adulthood, but the stuff that you do in your adulthood can only make you stronger as well. So if you're, if you're training and you're doing the stuff that you don't like to do, but you need to do it, so you're making yourself do it and you're setting an alarm and waking up every couple hours to eat or whatever, and get up at before the sun's up and go lift. It sucks, but I mean, that's, that's harder than some of the decisions you're gonna have to make in real life. I guess my definition of the best is um, different than some other people's, because when I look at it, it's being the best that you can actually be. Everyone has different genetics, they have different opportunities, because not everyone's gonna be able to hold a world record. You know, but you can always improve each time you step in the weight room or step on the platform or in any aspect in life. We try to live by that standard of fighting each day to be better, whether it's professionally or personally or whatever, but then at the same time remaining humble and not forgetting who you are and not forgetting where you come from. That's one of the reasons that Animal resonates with people is that it's a bunch of guys on those little journeys of self-improvement, all kind of coming together to, to create the one brand and the, one, the same message. Yeah.